Okay, today I'm drinking Scuttlebutt, an amber ale from Everett, Washington. Scuttlebutt, Scuttlebutt. And now the reveal. Okay, this is good. I like it. Hey everybody, it's me again, Ron Hetrick. Last year, we released a sobering report called The Demographic Drought. In that piece, we laid out several major factors contributing to the extreme labor shortage we're all experiencing. Hint, hint, it's not just COVID. Although COVID is likely what drove so many additional people out of the labor force. Today, we fast forward to the burning question on everyone's minds. Will we ever see the labor force return? Dun, dun, dun. That is what we're gonna talk about today. So drink up, join me in a scuttlebutt. Let's cut to the chase. Nobody really knows exactly when the labor force will start to look better than it is now. But if we understand two things, we can take a more educated guess. Number one, who's missing from the labor force? And two, what would have to change in order for those people to return? First things first, our working age population is still growing, but our labor force, meaning those who want to work, is lagging. We have a lot of baby boomers age 55 and up retiring and a declining number of 20 to 24 year olds starting to work. This ratio will only get worse. By the year 2034, older adults, aka the baby boomer generation, will outnumber children for the first time in US history. That being said, we could e uh, well, we could do something. That being said, we could alleviate a lot of our current pain if we could get more people off the sidelines and back into the labor force game. That brings us to the loaded question number two. What has to change for people to consider joining or rejoining the workforce? Keep in mind that before COVID, people had plenty of reasons to stay home and not take up traditional jobs. The fact that millions more are opting out now than before indicates that there may be new reasons keeping people away. So I felt pretty good. Boom. Like a, what's a boom roll? Mm. One possibility is a lack of childcare. Since early 2020, postings for childcare workers are up 15% and pay rates have crept up into the high $18 an hour range. Like many industries, daycare centers are struggling to find workers and therefore can't take on more kids. On top of that, parents are paying way more for this service. Filling these job openings first could go a long way to helping fill all of our other job openings. I got skills. I got scuttlebutt skills. skills. Our next two reasons are centered around fear, with some still afraid of contacting COVID, especially older populations, while others are afraid of vaccines and the mandates employers have added. These trends continue despite the 200% rise in remote work options, since most of our job openings are service jobs that cannot be done remotely. Lastly, COVID-related government assistance allowed many people to wait until things became less crazy, but analysis of falling personal savings rates shows that maybe people will need to return to work. All things considered, of our four to five million excess people out of the labor force, we do expect several million to return in the near future as these factors we talked about abate. So what can we do to fill our job openings as these people return? Well, I tackle this and more in our follow-up to the demographic drought. You can read it here. I'm Ron with my scuttlebutt amber ale. <laughs>